And now for Euclid's fifth postulate. Postulate 5. If two lines are intersected by a third line in such a way that the interior angles on one side of the intersecting line add up to less than the two right angles, then the two lines can be extended on that side until they intersect. Whew! Hold on. What do we got? We've got two lines. And then we have an intersecting line. And we're looking at the two angles, the interior, like in between the two lines, two interior angles on the same side of the intersecting line. If these two angles together add up to less than 180 degrees, although again, the ancient Greeks hadn't met the Babylonians who were talking about degrees, so they would say two right angles, 180 degrees. If those two add up to two right angles, then you can extend one of the lines, extend the other line, and eventually you'll find that they intersect. Huh. Well, while the first four of Euclid's postulates were generally accepted without much comment or concern, this one raised quite a few eyebrows. It seemed too complicated to be a decent axiom. It's violating that principle of, if you're going to have people just assume things without proof, they should be very simple, intuitive things. This is complicated. Many people thought that it was just something that Euclid couldn't figure out how to prove. And because he didn't know how to prove it, he just gave up and said, fine. You have to believe it if you want to read my book because I don't know how to do this. Thus, the fifth postulate problem was born. Mathematicians for thousands of years tried to prove themselves smarter than Euclid by actually proving this postulate. And because they want to prove this postulate without having to assume it, they're proving this postulate using only those first four postulates, connecting points, extending lines, uh, drawing circles, and you, you know, being able to measure angles. Now, many tried, none succeeded. Many times it seemed as though some great mathematician had come up with a proof, but when people looked over it really, really carefully, it always turns out that they had made some assumption beyond the first four postulates. They, they're working with the first four postulates, and then at some point they say, well, everybody knows that blah, blah, blah. Well, you didn't prove it. Therefore, you are assuming it without proof. Therefore, you're coming up with a new postulate. In other words, they had not proven the first postulate before. They had merely replaced it with a different unproven assumption, one that was able to prove it, and thus essentially the same as the fifth postulate. One of the best of these equivalent postulates is the following. Postulate 5 prime. Slightly different, but basically equivalent to the same. Given a line and a point not on the line, there is exactly one line parallel to the line that runs through the point. What are we saying? If you've got a line and you've got a point that's not on the line, there is exactly one parallel line going through the point parallel to the line. So if you have this, then you can prove Euclid's pop proposition. Why? Because you say, okay, here is the line right here. Here is a point not on the line. There's only one line parallel to it. And this can be proven that these angles add up to 180 degrees. Therefore, this line is not the same. And if it's not the one and only parallel line, it's not parallel. Parallel means running forever without intersecting. intersecting. If that doesn't happen, then they do intersect. So this is a cleaner, neater, but equivalent postulate. But still, people kept thinking, we should be able to prove geometry with only four postulates. And they kept trying and trying and failing. So that's it for the lessons on postulates. I hope you have an appreciation for how mathematics is built. Mathematics is built on assumptions. And we will talk more about this fifth postulate later.